Hello, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in here today. And especially thank you for your dedication and your commitment to your practice, to your spiritual practice, whatever that looks like, whether it involves a course in miracles or not. Because I know that there are many of you who are tuning in, the YouTube or someone else has recommended this channel, so welcome. I'm glad to have you. This is all about A Course in Miracles, but before you go away, stick around because something is going to be said that you're meant to hear. There's a reason you're here today. There are a number of people that are in the process, whatever that may look like, of checking this course out. These videos are for everyone, whether you are a student of A Course in Miracles or not. And if you are, it's for you, just as it is for everyone else. And it doesn't make any difference at all, whether you have been practicing for decades or 15 minutes. It doesn't matter. We're going to have a conversation today about the past and the present and what this course really deeply, truly involves, which is the correction of our perception, the correction of error in our mind and our learning to perceive truly under the guidance of our inner teacher. So what does all that mean? We don't see things as they are. We don't see things as they are, so this course is a course in mind training so that we may train ourselves under the guidance of our inner teacher, of course, to see things as they are, to perceive truly. We've got it backwards, in other words, which you may find yourself resisting, which is perfectly fine and, and expected and quite natural on the path. It is the ego that's resisting, the ego, this false sense of self, individual self that sees itself as separate from other egos, separate from other people, from other beings, separate, 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 an individual self-sustaining survival unit. That false sense of self is what's known as the ego. We've given it our allegiance. We could withdraw that allegiance. What's left? Well, what is? What is right now, eternally? We don't have to see ourselves as cut off and little, finite, separate, and small. Gosh, there are a host of other adjectives you could heap on that, aren't there? But we don't have to see ourselves that way. Yet, in our delusion, yes, delusion, we've chosen to. So let's make a different choice. The power of decision is yours. It may not feel like that at the time, but a decision not to choose, not to awaken, is still a decision that you're exercising. We're fond of playing the victim here in the world, thinking, oh, I have no choice. The world is oppressive, sick, dirty, and wrong. It's coming at me. You're not the victim of the world you see. If you choose to play one, that's you exercising your power of choice. So what is the choice? It's light or dark, God or the ego, yourself 
capital S versus the little individual ego self, which would be written with a lowercase s, individual self-sustaining survival unit competing for what we deem to be scarce and limited resources on this spinning ball of rock, whirling around and wondering why we're dizzy. It's something like that. It's a choice between truth or illusion, light or dark. We make this choice every moment of every day. And by the way, a decision not to decide is a decision nevertheless. It's a choice for darkness. We then keep ourselves spinning. If you want to call it circling the drain, well, that's, that's apt, isn't it? See, it's from this condition, this state that we all appear to be in, that we wish to escape. No one wants to suffer needlessly for all time. We're all interested in spirituality because at some point we have formulated the wish to have peace, the peace of God. We've formulated the thought, whether we were consciously aware of it at the time or not, actually doesn't matter. We had the thought that there's more to it than just meeting the needs of the physical body and our bank account and our social status and stuff. Here on Spinning Ball of Rock, there's more to it than just a clean email inbox. Of course there is. That's why we're all interested in what we call the spiritual path. So what is the problem, you might ask, with the way we see things now? Well, our school textbooks tell us this is the way it is. Our parents tell us this is the way it is. Our societies and economic systems, our political systems, all tell us this is the way it is. That's upside down, backwards, and then simply not true. Why is that? We're seeing the past. This is an idea that A Course in Miracles presents in both the text and the workbook for students extensively to get us to attenuate our mind to the fact that we don't see things as they are, because we don't see the present moment. We don't see things as they are because we're looking at the past, which we would all readily accept, especially here in the abstract, in a video such as this one, that the past is gone. It's not here. Of course it's not here. It's the past, yet that's what we're looking out at and choosing to stare at it. We don't see things as they are. All of this course is a course in mind training so that we may see things as they are presently, as they truly are. To perceive truly is to be aware of all reality through the awareness of our own. So we are all engaged on this path of learning to see ourselves as we are. How do we do that? See our brother as he is, is not was, but is right now, truly. 
See, what we do in our mind when we encounter someone else <clears throat> is we see the past and we judge and evaluate based on that. When we see somebody that perhaps we've been in a relationship with, whether it is an intimate personal relationship, as in a, a current or former romantic partner or a business relationship or even a neighbor relationship to a friend, family member, whatever it is. When we see somebody that has, well, troubled us in the past, we see this person and we formulate a knee-jerk assumption, a judgment, that they're going to do the exact same thing that they may have done 15 years ago, right now, today. So we better put our guard up because the attack is coming. And we automatically leap to this conclusion. <clears throat> we think that the future is going to be exactly like the past. So we skip the present moment completely. This is the way that the ego would have us see things. Separation, separation. Where we have been harmed by him or her or, or, or them. And it's going to happen again. So you better defend yourself. So it is in this constant state of anxiety, and it is a state of anxiety that we appear to find ourselves here. We're operating in the dark. Shown here in the text of A Course in Miracles that, well, we should let the past go because it is the darkness that hides our brother from us. You might ask, and rightly, why would we ever bring this with us? Well, we wouldn't bring the past darkness with us to darken the present and obscure it completely unless we were afraid of the light. I know, right? Bummer. Yet, think about that. It's true. If we were not afraid of the light, we would not be having this conversation. There would be no need for this series of things and practices that we call spirituality. There would be no need for this course in mind training. We would be where we have always been, perfectly awake and at home in God. We're waking up here from a dream. We're awakening. So to the extent that you're asking yourself, okay, well, what's in it for me? You know, business and marketing sort of questions. What's in it for me? What's the payoff for me? Why should I care? Well, because deep down we all want the same thing, the peace of God. And when you begin to shed some of the layers of darkness, when you begin to really, truly extend love in the present moment to your brother, the darkness begins to dissipate. These can be and are radical game-changing moments. Want what we call a shift. Forgive the Son of God. Extend love to your brother. Rather than see the past in him, Learn, under the guidance of your inner teacher, to see him as he is now. How is he now? One with God. 
there is no separation of any kind. So as you see your brother, so you see yourself. How would you see yourself, let me ask you, as a dark, miserable sinner based on what you did or did not do in the past, which is gone? Or would you see yourself as you are? Radiant, limitless, one with God, our creator, one with the extension of limitless, joyous, wholly joyous. What would you see? Spiritual practice, quite naturally, has us ask these questions of ourselves. As I'm fond of saying, it is an adult endeavor. It's for grown-ups. Because whether we're willing to admit this to ourselves or not, and of course, as always, the choice is yours. It is. In order to awaken, which is what we all really want, we're going to have to take a look at all of our stuff. There is, of course, another word in the English language that begins with the letter S that you're free to substitute for the word stuff. That. We're going to have to raise it to our awareness so that we may forgive and release it and let it go. This course is all about our learning to see things as they are now, not as they were. And there is no need for any of us to fear the light. No matter how much linear time it may take to let go of that fear, there is no need to fear the light because it's who we are. It's what we are, it's where we are. There is no need to fear the light. Now, should you find yourself afraid of giving up your identity as an ego, our precious definitions and descriptions of ourselves, that is perfectly understandable and part of the path. So if you're experiencing this, let me comment that there is nothing wrong with you. This is something that we all experience. You may wonder, well, this may take a long time. Well, so what if it does? That's what time is for, for us to awaken. Ultimately, there is only the eternal now, it's eternity. So there's no past, there's no future, there's no linear time. It is not real. So here, while we've made it real to ourselves, we've made a convention and a rather enigmatic convention at, at that, out of it, with all of our measurements of days, weeks, months, years, seconds, minutes, millennia, eons or whatever, ultimately there's, there's no time. God is. We're, we're one with God, remember, the thought of God, the extension of God, God's creation. This is the Son of God. This is you, it's your neighbor, it's your brother, it's who we all are. There is only perfect oneness. That's literal by the way. So yes, the simplicity of these ideas can seem rather daunting 
in fact, rather perplexing. Because we find ourselves, in one way or another, unwilling to accept it for what it is. Yet, paradoxically enough, it's what we're all called to do, and you may say, drawn to do, compelled to do. Each and every one of us wants the same thing, the peace of God. There is, in truth, nothing else. We have only to remove the barriers to our awareness of this. So, as we wrap up here, again, we're not seeing things as they currently are. There is only perfect oneness. So when we see our own faults or our brother's faults, which are the same thing, when we lash out, blame, and judge, and condemn, we're only condemning ourselves. Would you continue to do that? Who you are is beyond all words and concepts. We're simply using words to point to this. This is all, incidentally, any teacher can do, is point and invite you to walk the path. I invite you to walk this path with me. Will you? All right. So thank you, as always, for tuning in here. Comments and questions here on this channel are much appreciated and always welcome. So there have been a number of really excellent questions that have led to some standalone videos here in this series. And as we go through the text of A Course in Miracles, it's perfectly fine to stop and pause because I'm very interested in what's coming up for you live. So if you have questions, please feel welcome to leave them here. And if you have not yet subscribed and you're watching, please do that. Please go ahead and subscribe. Join us. This is the subscription prompt here. Click that and you'll be invited to subscribe and join us. Several videos appear every week. Okay. So thank you so much for tuning in and again, for all your comments and questions, and especially for your commitment and dedication to your spiritual practice, whatever that may look like. This series of videos is about A Course in Miracles. So whether you're a course student or not, I know that you've heard something up to this point here, we're about to end the video, that you were meant to hear. So that's what you can pay special attention to, the message that was intended for you. All right, thank you. I'll see you soon.